Welcome, uh, welcome to PyCon Thailand once more. Uh, this is the second day, and I, I hope like a lot of people are a little sleepy. Uh, probably like should have, should take a, a cup of coffee out there. Uh, so this talk is uh, Attack of Pythons. Uh, how, how many people? Uh, to how many people it seems like intriguing? What, what are you? What are you expecting out of this talk? Anyone? So this is going to be about uh, the hidden gotchas in Python. Uh, mostly features in Python programming language, uh, which are by design uh, in the language itself, but uh, are a little tricky uh, to understand in the first place. So it hits a lot of developers, and I've uh, listed down a few of them, so I'm going to like share with you, and uh, hopefully you learn something from this talk. Exactly uh, what you would probably feel uh, when I would show you like some of, some of these examples. Uh, so my name is Manoj, and uh, I run PyData Delhi. Uh, it's a, it's a data science community of more than like 4,000 people uh, in New Delhi, India. Uh, and I talked about this uh, last evening about uh, PyData and uh, all these like Python communities. All right, uh, so let's start with a really simple example, uh, which is uh, list repetition with uh, nest lists. Uh, this is just a, just a simple list uh, of zeros, and I'm trying to change a couple of uh, elements to one. Let's try to run this. And let's try to print it. So this is uh, what happens. How many people uh, were thinking that this was not the expected behavior? Because I'm not changing every uh, every row. It's just like one particular row. It's the uh, basically the third row, like the second index. And um, apparently, what what happens is it's changing uh, literally everything. So, so how many people? Uh, have encountered like something like this while making like matrices or something uh, along these ideas. Okay, so the the reason behind this is uh, when you are trying to create the my list, it's creating a reference to the list again and again when when, when you are doing that multiplied by four. So basically, it creates the first one with like four, five elements, five zeros, and then it it multiplies it by four, and that multiplication is basically a reference to the first list. So in in uh, in practice, uh, it's not like literally creating like those uh, like four uh, like mu like multi-dimensional lists uh, like again and again, but it's merely uh, just a reference. So what's what ends up happening is you change the list, uh, you change uh, an element in the list, and it actually updates everyone because everyone is referencing to the, the same element, right? So what's the uh, what's the fix uh, to this uh, example? So we can use. Uh, Something like uh, a list comprehension to uh, to uh, you know to solve this problem. So you just uh, do a small list of lists uh, for x and x range, uh, and then just print out the list, and you would get it. I hope so. So my examples are in Python 2, and somehow this is using Python 3, but I think it should be fine. So now it should be fine. Uh, I can uh, again do my same stuff, uh, and now it should be okay. It's just uh, the same thing I did in the beginning. I changed the uh, third, uh, the third list, uh, the third uh, like 2D list, and uh, now just uh, the the changes are being referenced in that list only. All right, uh, second one: don't make spaces and tabs. What editor people use, like Vim, Sublime, or any any sort of editor? But most of these editors have a, a configuration where you can actually set up, you know, how much. How much spaces your tabs will take, like four spaces, eight spaces, you know, whatever you feel like doing. But the problem happens when you actually mix tabs and spaces, and you're working in a team, and multiple people working across team using like different text editors. Maybe you, maybe your editor means that says that a, a tab means like two spaces, and somebody else's means that it's four spaces. But it's Python, right? So in Python, a two space means a two space, and four space means four spaces. So once that gets mixed, uh, a lot of like indentation issues happen. And your project would probably not, uh, you know, run uh, successfully. So just don't uh, don't make spaces and tabs. Use consistency. Uh, use configuration across teams. Uh, this is just a small example how uh, it would actually appear. Uh, oh yeah, something like this. Okay, explicit typecast strings. Uh, do you think this is possible? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, obviously. It's just a string. How can I convert it to a float? All right. Do you think uh, this is possible? Hell yeah. I mean, why not? 
and this is this this is this is something crazy uh, because uh, the the first one is also a string, right? It's not a number. It's uh, I'm not I'm trying to convert uh, it to a floating point, uh, but it's not working. It's just a string. The second one should be something similar, and it turns out that in Python there are some specific keywords when you try to return the uh, the uh, the floats of those uh, those strings. They have like some specific output, and there's a bunch of lists of them. Uh, this is particularly uh, like um, I was just testing out with INF and uh, I got the result and then I tested with minus INF and I was still getting the result. So I, thought, I decided like let's see uh, infinity I, I know for sure it's a, a really large number but can I do like some comparisons uh, where I can check if the, uh, the infinity is greater than a particular like integer and it turns out it works out pretty well. It works out pretty well. You can actually use this in your code base like it's pretty safe. But yeah, it's it's really dangerous. I mean, nobody will understand why it's happening. So yeah, so probably don't do don't do that as well. Uh, same hash in a dictionary. Let's start with a small uh, small dict, and let's update. Uh, I add one key in my uh, dictionary. I add another key. I add one more key. Uh, all right. Um, so what's happening here? Uh, so how many people think that uh, I'm using like three keys uh, in my dictionary? First of all, so I have 1.0, I have true, I have one, right? And I have Quora, I have Twitter, I have Facebook. So it looks like I'm using like three keys in my dictionary, right? So it should my dictionary should some look something like uh, 1.0. Uh, matched with Quora, true, matched with Twitter, one matched with Facebook. But let's try to print this out. Whew. It turns out uh, it gives out Facebook. Let's change it uh, to maybe one. OK, it's, it's giving Facebook again. Uh, what about 1.0? Oh, it's Facebook again. Like, what's happening? What's, what, what happened to my? Uh, my dict, and it turns out that although I'm doing like three keys, uh, three key updates on my dictionary, it's it not it's not working like that. So the reason behind this is, so Python dictionaries works on the concept of hashing, right? So all the keys you pass onto, uh, like initializing your dictionary, it actually hashes that key value, and it turns out that the hash value of one and 1.0. It's true. Uh, the hash value is the same, right? And also in uh, in Python we have uh, uh, we have this thing where the true is referenced by one and the false is referenced by zero. So apparently what, what's actually happening is you do start with 1.0 and uh, you do start with Quora, but once you do like a true is equals Twitter, it actually updates it. It it, it never uh, it it doesn't like stays uh, uh, Quora again and it turns to Twitter. And then you at the end you do again uh, another update. Which turns it to Facebook, but so what happens uh, at the end is you just get like one key and one value, which is one 1.0 1 and Facebook. That's it. It's just because the hashes are uh, hashes are the same, and uh, Python has an implicit property. Okay, so this is just a small uh, example. Uh, uh, so this is like something crazy you can also like, do. Uh, like true plus true equals true. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you can always do like you know, if you want to like do addition, you can always use instead of one, you can do use true. But yes, it's, these are just like fancy examples. Uh, don't try that in in real life scenario it, because this is really weird. And uh, there was one more example uh, which you can probably try is this one. You can also do like uh, indexing instead of using the literal numbers uh, by the boolean values. So four, five, six is the list, and you take uh, the uh, the true. Uh, value of that, which is basically 1, so you get back 5. All right, integers is Python. Uh, a lot of people have used integers, right? I mean, this is something uh, what you do in the, in the uh, really beginning. So let's try with like two integers. And I just have like a and b equals 75, and I try to pr print the IDs. Uh, Okay, it turns out it's uh, 
it's 49 with something something and uh, it's uh, the uh, the really uh, interesting thing is both these IDs are similar isn't it these two numbers are the same right let's take another example I mean to check what's happening uh, I take another example uh, a 600 B 600 all right and then let's try to print the IDs of A and B. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like these, these are the same the same ones. So why uh, why the first uh, two numbers are the same? Let's I can like change the numbers like to something else, and it's still the same, right? So what happens in Python uh, uh, in the in the design is. Uh, we have used, uh, we have used, uh, sorry, we have made the, the, the language to uh, save on like small numerals, like small integers. So we have a range from negative five to 250, uh, 255, where all the numbers are basically like pre-computed. So every single time uh, you want, you want to use them, uh, you don't basically get a new uh, object from integer pool. So basically, in Python, what happens is when you try to uh, y use a new number, it actually goes back to the uh, to Python and it calls. Uh, something from uh, a pi integer object and then it creates a new object but what happens in this case it basically just updates the reference count it doesn't uh, create a new object like literally it just like updates a reference count again and again so in uh, in python you can also like check uh, the reference count of like any object by like sys dot get ref count and you can actually see how many times it's being like referenced uh, in your program or like in your library so so this is uh, this is something uh, because of which uh, all the numbers like like beyond that range, beyond negative five to the negative infinity and beyond uh, positive two five five, they're gonna be having they're gonna have a different ID. They're gonna have a different object. Uh, local variable optimization, which is uh, fairly simple. Uh, a lot of people might have used uh, like ran into this idea uh, when you try to access a variable which is not. Uh, there already, you get something like an unbound local error. Uh, a really quick fix: uh, you can just take the object globally, and this is uh, probably uh, like one way to do it. The other way would be uh, to use in some sort in some sort of use that uh, variable through the function because uh, global variables are really hard to track sometimes. So it's much better to uh, you know take uh, I mean to make the function pass on, like take the parameters. The trailing spaces. Uh, so a lot of times people try to like print, you know, like when you start with like Python programming, you do like those uh, like di like what do you call like diamond diamond pattern, like you know, do do some like printing patterns. And uh, doing that with like C C plus plus is fairly simple because you know that uh, every time you like print something, it literally like prints over there, and there is no additional thing. But uh, in Python, uh, when you try to print it, it actually gives you additional uh, like uh, like endings, line endings, and it comes something like this. Like everything, everything is on the next line. You can probably uh, 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 do get rid of this in Python 3 by something called as end equals uh, an empty space, and then you can literally uh, get it uh, in in the same in the same line without any spaces. But if this was Python 2, then this wouldn't even be possible because in Python 2, the print is not like uh, print doesn't work like this. This is in Python 3.6. Uh, so, in that case, the only problem is to check on the system module, which is uh, a little more to do, like uh, more than one line, and then you can actually do the same uh, loop. And then uh, instead of like printing, you basically like pipe it to the standard output, and then you get the same output. But yeah, this is with Python 3. Uh, this wouldn't be possible with Python 2, and uh, with Python 2, you can actually do this. Uh, catching multiple exceptions. So exception handling, everyone tries that, but uh, sometimes you try to like uh, catch multiple exceptions, and you write stuff like this, where you say try do something and accept one particular error, accept second error, accept third error, do something else, right? But in Python, uh, in in this particular example, I expect my program to behave. Uh, you know, in a sense that it, it should take, uh, it should check for an index error as well as a value error. But the except in Python actually works uh, with the tuple uh, where the first parameter is your, the error and the second one is basically your error message. So in this case, it's, it's not going to check uh, for value error, it's just going to check for index error. 
And the way in, you, in which you can fix this is by passing all the, uh, all the exceptions in a tuple and then uh, just having your error message at the end and then you know, just doing anything with it. So this is how, uh, this is really a fairly simple and straightforward, but uh, this is something, I mean, I also like sometimes do and just like face uh, a lot of issues with this. And sometimes it gets really hard to like debug. Okay, so this is gonna get a little interesting, the, uh, this uh, plus equal operator. Uh, so it's fairly simple, you have uh, some value and you can update a particular value by these two uh, methods, right? So let's say I have one and I update 42 with that, I get 43. I have one, I update with the second method, it's the same result. So let's try uh, uh, with a small list. Uh, I have a list and then I add a four to that and then I check the ID and then I add a five to that using a different method and I get an ID of Z. Of Z. Uh, so something you'll notice that, again here, the addresses, the IDs are different. Uh, and it's the same variable, right? It seems like it's the same variable. But in, in, in practice, it's not working like that. So when you, uh, on the, the, the output 33, uh, like input 33, uh, when I do Z, Z equals Z plus uh, five, when I try to like uh, append the number five using uh, the, the, normal, the, the, the normal way, uh, what happens is it doesn't actually append directly to the object, but it actually takes the object, adds to the uh, list, and then returns the object. So it's a three-way three process. And in that, in, that, in that process, what happens is the new object basically gets updated. So you, you, you don't have the same Z now, you have a different Z, like, altogether. So we can, uh, like, take this... Uh, example and uh, explore more uh, in, in, the, in, in, in the sense of a class. Uh, so let's talk about class attributes versus uh, instance attributes. Uh, a simple class with an init method uh, uh, initializing A to 43 and then just calling the object and then just checking the value of A, like fairly, fairly straightforward. And I have uh, a different class uh, which doesn't have an instance, right? I mean, uh, it just doesn't have a, a constructor and I just have my value and I just like check the value so I just get back the value. All right, so let's let's uh, let's write a small class and uh, I have a small class, I have a small list, I, I have a small constructor and what it initially, what it actually does, it just updates, uh, you know, that value which I passed through the, uh, through the class and it updates that particular list. All right, so we run it and let's try to create an object. Let's try to print uh, the value which is fine and then let's try creating another object, and let's try to print uh, that value. Ooh, okay, so another interesting thing ha is happening. Although these two are like different objects, right? I mean, uh, F is a different object, G is a different object, coming from the same class, that's fine. And one I'm uh, updating with like 42, another I'm updating with 100. But when I try to go, you know, uh, to uh, like create more objects, uh, I'm, I'm actually seeing that, uh, the value of the new of the list is basically just not like a new. It's just getting like added on, like you know, again and again. So if I go on with like an h equals like foo of like 200, and then I try to do h dot bar, I think it's 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 gonna give you like 4200, 200. Like why is it happening? So based on uh, so what we actually saw in the previous examples, how that uh, this plus equal to operator works and the object is equals object plus uh, works, uh, it's the same thing. It just uh, doesn't get you uh, a new object. Oops. So I can do it again. So we get F, G, and now it actually works out. Because in this case, what's happening is uh, when you do it this way, your object is basically getting created, not like getting like updated. And it's a uh, it's a property with list uh, like mutation. So. When something like this happens, you need to like see uh, what I'm actually doing, uh, how my objects will, uh, how the values of objects will get updated in my uh, in my program. Uh, so list slicing, uh, fairly simple. A list with like a couple of elements. Uh, oops. How, how it works is like really simple. Uh, you just like pass in the list uh, with an index, and you get a value. What happens in a case when you try to get like you know, more objects, maybe like nine, it gives you an index on the right. Let's try to 
change it and uh, let's do some, some sort of slicing. So let's say I, I want to like get everything from the first element to the last. I get something and I want to try you know, something else. It gives me something, something different. But what happens if I go beyond what I have in my list and return the slicing? Remember, so when, when we did this, I actually got an index error. But when I, when I do this, I, I do a slicing of the list from, uh, from that particular element, I get an empty list. Like, what? What's happening? So, so this is something which, is, uh, which can only be uh, checked uh, by uh, a lot of like, you know, uh, your uh, tests. So make sure like when uh, something like these happen, like when you're trying to like, access elements, you have your like uh, a test working properly. Uh, mutable default arguments. I'm actually using a rice plugin, which sometimes just like behaves abnormally. I don't know why. Uh, so mutable default arguments. I have a function with a particular parameter, which is a, a list, an empty list in this case, and I append a uh, number to that, and I just print it. And uh, I have another list. I, I call this function uh, with one two three, and uh, it gives me back one two three and the new number. I do it with some another list one and two. I get back one two and triple two, and and so on. But what happens if I just call my function and I do something like this? I call the function again and again repetitively. And uh, what I see is I, I keep getting the same number in the list again and again, appended every single time. But this is something which I don't want to do, right? I mean, this was the example. So what's happening is the list is a mutable, uh, a mutable argument. And if it's default, it's basically not uh, updating itself. It's not like being an empty list. So what you can actually do in this case is you can take the parameter as a none, as a none type, and then check if it's none. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's none, uh, then you can uh, update it. And uh, if it's not none, you know, uh, you can actually make it empty and then start with a new list. So that's how it can be fixed. Uh, string concatenation, that's a really uh, a quick example I can uh, show you. Uh, so I'm using the same, uh, same behavior uh, with like objects. Uh, uh, object equal object plus, uh, you know, something, and also uh, a method from the standard library, which is the append from string. And uh, I do literally the same thing. It's, everything is the same. I do a bunch of, like, string uh, concatenation. And I just, like, check the time on that. And it seems like the first one takes, like, 23 seconds, and the first and the second one, it takes, like, 0.3 seconds. But I think by now you can actually understand why it's happening, because in the first case, I'm creating an object again and again. It's, like, s equals s plus something, right? So it's taking an object, adding something to it, and then returning back. They, this takes a lot of time because this is a, this is a fairly, uh, like a three-way process. Okay, uh, this is a really standard question. Uh, it's, it's a tuple uh, and updating a tuple. It's, uh, how many people think this uh, would like give some error? How many people have seen this example? That would be much easier. So I have a tuple and I just update it with like some some list, right? But what what happens uh, in practice uh, when I do this example? It gives me a it gives me a type error that it, uh, I mean tuple doesn't have item assignment for sure. But what what happens is uh, the next thing when I try to check t. So initially the t was just one two and one two three, but now it's like one two. And one, two. So. Although it gives us uh, the error, it's just because uh, uh, when it tries to uh, do that like plus equal to, it actually it does update uh, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 new the new list uh, sorry the new tuple, but uh, in, uh, in 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 the middle of the process, it actually stops and uh, gives the uh, uh, gives uh, gives this uh, type error. So this is a, a, a trick question, and uh, they always ask for forgiveness than permission. So don't do stuff like this, but something more easy. I mean, just assume that things would be easy for you. Just go and do it. And then if it's not there, just you can always use an exception, right? Python has a really nice uh, uh, exception handling in the standard library. So you can always use that. And there are a couple of resources. I'll probably post this on Twitter. So you can find uh, all the examples over there. And if you have any questions, you can ask me now. And that's my Twitter. Thank you so much.